Hey readers, I want to start a, li a little bit differently today. It may sound a little odd, but I want you to leave a YouTube comment right now. Not any words, not full sentences, but a smiley face, a middle face, or a frowny face, one of these three options, and tell me, how do you feel about reading workshop? So it shouldn't take long. I want you to go with your gut feeling. How do you feel about reading workshop? Smiley face, middle face, frowny face. Go ahead and do that. All right, that should have been enough time to leave your comment. So I'm interested in seeing how do you feel about reading workshop. So the reason I ask this is because there are two ways that you can really look at this classroom. The first one is like this student here who's a dazed zombie and you can tell the look on her face is boring. Um, but the other way that you can look at this classroom and approach our learning is like this student. Um, your brain fully turned on and you're excited. So, I mean, the same thing goes for reading. There's a really big difference between flying through the pages or flying through our day without thinking, right? Um, so there's a big difference between flying through pages, not thinking, and actually taking the time to think deeply as you read. In order to think deeply, you need to be thinking analytically. So today I want to teach you that in order to think analytically, a person will divide into parts, their book, their sections. Um, they will select parts, they could rank parts, and they compare parts of a book or a text that they're reading. So a person can decide, I'm going to try thinking about, and then think in any one of those ways for dividing your text, selecting a part of the text, ranking it, or comparing it. Um, and then see if that thinking yields any new insights or any new ideas. Oftentimes, it will. So take your reading workshop, for example. We're going to think analytically about reading workshop. The first thing we're going to do is split it into parts. So instead of thinking of just our reading block or our literacy block, let's split it into parts. As part of our reading workshop, you have your mini lesson. You're watching that right now. Um, you're sitting quietly, um, not at the carpet anymore. You're at your desk as part of our um, flex seating, this part you're at your desk, you're actively engaged in the lesson. So when I'm asking you to pause and write, you're doing so. Pause and comment, you're doing so. Pause and think, you're doing so. Um, if I'm asking for you to pause and recap or respond somehow, that's your active participation. After that, we have our independent reading, and during this time, we are conferencing, whether you and I are meeting one-on-one, -on -one. you could be shopping for a just-right book, um, you could be in a strategy group with me, you could be um, leaving sticky notes in your notebook if I'm asking you to be searching for something, you could be in a guided, guided reading group with a teacher, um, but during this time, you are reading just-right books, you could be somewhere comfortable around the room, so you're quiet in your spot, you're being respectful of other readers, so you're not disrupting them when you know they're working. Um, you could be in a book club. Those are coming up soon for everyone. And then finally, there's a piece where you're discussing your reading, where you're talking about what has happened. So this is how we can divide, we can split our reading workshop into different parts. That's one way to think analytically about reading workshop. What we could also do is rank the parts. What part of reading workshop helps you the most? I know the part that helps me get to know you as readers the most is any time that we are talking face to face, whether it's in a group or a conference. So to me, that's most important. How could you rank your guided reading workshop? What part of workshop helps you the most? Another way we can think analytically about our reading workshop is to compare um, our reading workshop to something else. What are the similarities and differences between reading workshop and writing workshop? Well, I know our writing workshop also has a mini lesson. It also has independent reading, where you, independent writing, where you may be working with me, conferencing with me, and there's a time to share as well. So those are a lot of similarities. A difference is that maybe we're writing for a little bit less time than we're reading. Um, so thinking analytically, you can split into parts, you can rank, you can compare. So <clears throat> to develop ideas, readers, Think analytically by dividing the subject into parts, selecting, ranking, and comparing. The other day you glued this piece into your notebook. Today you have this strip, so not a whole chart, you have this strip to glue underneath the ideas you've already um, glued into your notebook. So please pause the video right now. This is part of your active participation 
right, from the parts of your mini lesson, I'd like you to glue this sentence strip below the chart that you've already glued right on the same page underneath it. Go ahead and pause and do that now. Press play when you're ready. All right, now that you have that glued, let's go ahead and move on. I want to try and think analytically about um, our book, about our actual reading, about Home of the Brave. So uh, we have a couple ways we can do this. Um, I mean, you know one of my goals this year is to raise the level of your reading and raise the level of your writing, and thinking, it, thinking analytically is a way to do this. So to think analytically, we have some parts, some options. We can divide into parts, select parts, rank parts, compare parts. Um, I've said that a few times already. Um, you'll be able to find these hanging up on a chart in the classroom as well if you forget the parts of thinking analytically. Um, what I want to start with, um, these would actually also be really great for a reading response. Um, and thinking analytically about um, Keck and about Home of the Brave, maybe something we would want to do is select a part of the book to analyze, to think analytically about it. Select the part that might best represent Keck's feelings. What is he feeling? Um, we could also compare. We could compare Keck's relationship with his brother to his relationship to Ganwar. Or we could compare the relationship um, with Dave compared to the relationship he had his dad. You could rank parts. Which parts are the most important in showing us Keck's character traits or Keck's personality? I think what I want us to do is practice comparing. So in a YouTube comment, I want you to think, um, just think about the pieces that we've heard of today's reading, um, today's new sections up through the section brother, and compare what are the similarities and differences between Keck's relationship with his brother and Keck's relationship with Ganmar. Please leave a YouTube comment um, thinking analytically, comparing these two relationships. Press play when you're ready. All right, so you should have left a comment comparing the relationship between Keck's brother and his relationship with Ganmar. Um, what you may have noticed in comparing those relationships is that he was closer with his brother. Not only could he fool around, but he was also scolded. His brother was kind of like a father figure. But with Ganmar, he really never knows where he stands. He feels kind of uneasy, and he doesn't even know if he's welcomed. So those relationships are definitely a little bit different. So the thinking that we've been doing today really isn't easy. Thinking analytically is not something that's a piece of cake to do. Um, but just like we've done some thinking about Home of the Brave today, I want you to think about your own reading. You don't need to write it unless you want to do this as a reading response today. Um, but how could you divide your book into parts? How could you select parts? How could you rank those parts? And how could you compare different parts of the book or ideas of the book? So today, as you're reading, I'll be looking for students who are thinking analytically about their text. Happy reading.